Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to do two things today. Number one, we're going to look at the Spectre Arms and see how it performed out the box at its first skirmish. And then number two, we're going to decide, or I'm going to let you know, whether it's good value for money. So to decide whether this is good value for money, we're going to compare it to the other platforms or the 416 platforms on the market. And currently that's the VFC, which is licensed by Umarex. So it's the HK licensed version or the Tokyo Marui uh, blowback version. Both of those are a lot more expensive than this. So it's whether this is good value for money in standard form or whether it's good value for money once you've upgraded it. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about how it performed out the box at its first skirmish and also what I did, because obviously it's not in its standard form as it is here. So when we went to the first match, I, it was a CQB uh, match. It was in some disused tunnels. It was very dark. Uh, it was completely pitch black, so you can't see a thing. So there's a few things I had to do to make it more workable before we got there. So first thing was to fit the flashlight on the front with a pressure pad on this side. I put this um, angle four grip on because I had it in one of my spares boxes upstairs, uh, just to make it a bit more comfortable and for using the flashlight. And I put this red dot off one of my other guns on there just to make it a bit easier just to find a target. Uh, the only other thing I did before I went was to fit a sling mount on the back here just so I could put a single point bungee sling on there just to make it easier just to transfer it from left to right both shoulders and also to get to a side arm so it just made it a bit more workable. Other than that I played it standard so you could get a proper idea of, of how it operated. So first thing in the morning I took it out for a chrono, it chronoed at 320. One thing I should add before anything else is I did have to improve the air seal on this before the game. Uh, you may remember from my first video, if, you, if you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, why not? Um, go back and see it, I'll put a link in below. Um, you'll notice that it was actually fine a little bit uh, low on FPS. So what it should have been, it wasn't there. So what I did was I took the gearbox out, I re-greased the cylinder and the gears and the nozzle and got the FPS up to 320 from I think it was about 260 originally so it was dry inside the gearbox and it did need lubrication so when we got there chrono at 320 in the morning it was really consistent between 320 and about 325 so that was good we went out for the first match and the first thing that happened was I started having a few feeding problems so I was getting some intermittent feeding issues with the um, magazine now I use PTS magazines, a really high quality magazine, uh, one of the best you can get for, for feeding. And it's, it's a tight fit, but there's a little bit of wiggle front and back in the magwell. So what I had to do, I went back to the safe zone, I put a little bit of felt pad at the back here just to push the magazine for, for, further forwards. And it was absolutely faultless after that. I didn't have any more feeding problems, but it's worth thinking about that if there is a bit of movement in the mag, then it can cause an issue. And it's something I've come across in the past as well. So worth bearing in mind, if it is moving backwards and forwards, find out the optimal position and just put a little spacer or something in there just to try and help it. So once that was done, the rest of the day, it fed perfectly. The hop was consistent. Um, it wasn't you know, the best hop I've ever used in the world, but it was certainly playable in a, a CQP environment. And I should note that although it's CQB, there are some long distances because it is a tunnel you tend to have quite a long reach out to some areas. So even then I got to try the long range sort of effectiveness of it and it was consistent. And I, I was able to get the red dot into a position where I knew where the, the BBs were gonna go. So it was very playable. It was perfectly uh, suitable for the environment. And I was really impressed with it straight out of the box. It did a great job, much better actually than I expected it to do. So one thing you'll find about this gun is it's really, nicely balanced it fits well in your shoulder it's nice to move around it feels good it's not heavy um it's just just feels good and it feels really solid there's just no movement in it whatsoever any movement you hear is literally the sling and nothing else um so you can you get it in your shoulder you can transfer to each hand if you're left-handed or right-handed it's easier to move around it just feels balanced the grip feels nice in your hand honestly it's a lovely gun to use nice solid snap when you use the selectors I, I couldn't couldn't say enough about it so the spectra arms hk416 costs roughly 200 pounds 
And after the day, days playing and the skirmish, I felt that there was a lot sort of locked away in this, this gun. There was a lot of potential inside this gun that just needed a few upgrades to bring it out. And the idea is with that is to get this gun at 200 pounds and to upgrade it to actually bring it up to the standard or see the standard of its more expensive cousins. And to do that, you have to have a comparison. So the upgrades we looked at were internal upgrades in the gearbox, so such as piston, cylinder, cylinder head, and nozzle. And the gears have stayed the same. On top of that, there was a MOSFET. Now, with a lot of my guns, I go crazy and I put gate Titan uh, MOSFETs in them, trigger units. They're fantastic pieces of equipment. But with this, I wanted to do it on a budget to show that you could do this without spending the earth. So with that in mind, I put a gate Pico AAB MOSFET in, uh, a tight ball barrel, a pro in hop unit with a flat hop up and knob. And that total came to 147 pounds uh, for all the upgrades. So when you add that to the price, the 200 pounds price tag of the Spectre Arms, you're looking at 347 pounds. So at that price tag, we'll compare it to its cousins. So first of all, you've got the Tokyo Marui 416. Um, that gun has the electric blowback, and it has a legendary Tokyo Marui reliability and performance, although it will come underpowered uh, without any modification. So we know that anyone who knows air software has been around a long time, they know Tokyo Marui products are fantastic. However, the Tokyo Marui comes in between 550 and 600 pounds, and you still need to do modifications to them to get them to where you possibly want them. Other than that, you're looking at the VFC. Now the benefits of the VFC for the people who like their trademarks is it's fully licensed with Umarex and it has the H and K trademarks and it's a really lovely looking gun, really nice external as well belt. The downside is the internals of some of the VFC guns. Sometimes they need a bit of work to make them perfect, but they do work well. I'm not saying they're rubbish or anything like that. They do work well, but they come in at 420 pounds roughly. So when you're looking at this at, at a complete cost with its upgrades of £347, it's actually very good value for money. And then you look at the performance that you get following the upgrades. With a saving of £82 over the VFC and £200 over the Tokyo Marui, if you're new to the sport of Airsoft, you could actually have yourself quite a, a nicely upgraded 416. If you do the work yourself, obviously this doesn't have labour charges because I did the work myself. But if you're confident to actually strip a gun down and, and to take apart and do the work yourself to get the best performance out of it, it will leave you with a bit of money, not just to buy magazines or a sidearm. Certainly with the Tokyo Marui in comparison, you can buy yourself a sidearm and some magazines and to keep yourself out completely. Now, bearing in mind, I've got quite a few really highly upgraded airsoft AEGs in my, my collection of guns. Uh, and a couple of them are M4 platforms. So the question is, with the Spectre Arms, should it stay or should it go? And my personal opinion is, it's going to stay. So I am keeping this gun. It is really nice to fire, and since I've upgraded it, it's performing as well as some of my better AEGs. Now, okay, it hasn't got the Titan MOSFET in here like I have with my others, so you don't get that really snappy trigger response or the, um, the pre-cocking feature where you get that instant crack in it and the BB goes. But that's something I could do at a later date if I wanted to. It literally, you plug it in, it, you take it apart, you slot it in instead of the trigger contacts and away you go. So I have that option in the future. And as it is, I am more than happy to play with this gun. And I'm going to this weekend. I'm taking it with me and I'll have it alongside my sniper rifle and my other M4, which is more of a DMR setup. I'm going to use them all together because this is a great weapon to have. It's so nice to use. This weekend it's Woodland, last weekend it's CQB. It's really versatile. And with the upgrades, it really pushes the BBs out there. And the accuracy is in line with one of my really expensive AEGs. So with that said, it's really good value for money. The upgrades, are, it's crying out for the upgrades and you'll get yourself a really solid 416 AEG. So I'd say well done Spectre Arms. You've made something that you've come in at a really good price point and it's just set up, whether you're experienced or you're new, that you can get something that's really worth playing with and it's gonna be good fun and hopefully see you out a few years. 
So that's the end of this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave any comments you want if you've got any questions. In the next week or so, we'll be getting a package, hopefully, from Novridge with a, a new pistol in it. It was released today. I got my order in just after the release time, so we could get it nice and early and give you our, our honest opinion on it. And as always, it will be an honest bones and all opinion. I'm not swayed. I'm not paid by anyone. It, they're genuine opinions or my opinions. So... Stay tuned, look forward to seeing you again and bye bye for now.